Hi, I'm Sarah Sati. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to guide you in a short practice for after a run. This is a no frills practice. You don't need much, just a mat. Uh, you don't even need a special environment. I'm in an abandoned building complex in the Southern Caribbean right now. Um, I just finished my run, so I don't have much with me. I have my mat, I have a tennis ball and a blanket. You can use a strap if you have a yoga strap, a block if you need it. And we'll do something to decompress the hips and deal with the shoulders. I just did a, a hill run, so if you're a runner, this is a practice that you can do every day to keep your body healthy or after a run um, to decompress. So come to the front of your mat. We're gonna warm up with some Surya Namaskar A and Surya Namaskar B, three rounds. You can come to the front of the mat, bring the palms of your hands together. Right away, ignite this breathing through the nose only. So if you're not a yogi, if you don't know Ujjayi breathing, don't worry about that right now. Just simply close your mouth and work on regulating the inhalations and exhalations through the nose, making the breath smooth and soft, letting that be the focus of your practice. And then cultivate this awareness of your entire physical form, trying to awaken the mind to areas of the body that it is usually asleep to. So especially the back body and to look at the joints of the body, these connecting spaces, the wrists, elbows, shoulders, the ankles, the knees, and the hips. And keeping your mind focused on these areas of the body, being gentle, compassionate to yourself. Exhale, release the hands down by the sides. Inhale, Surya Namaskar A, the arms come up, look up. Exhale, fold. If you don't have a full fold, just grab the shin bones, lift the chest here as you inhale. And then exhale, if you need to bend the knees, short hamstrings, bend the knees, take yourself back to push up. Inhale, upward facing dog. And then exhale, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Let's just stay here and begin to bring some movement to the body. You can start to do a little bit of waves with the spine. First, just the upper body, and then begin to include the lower body. And you can take any movements that feel good for you right now in this first downward facing dog. If you go in one direction with the waves, reverse it. Notice there's likely a direction that feels more easy for you. Just be aware of that. And then come back to neutral. Look towards the belly button, one breath here. Exhale, bend the knees, lift the heels, look forward, and lightly come to the front of the mat. Lengthen the front body, and exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, palms touch, look up, and exhale, samastiti. Two more times. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen the front body, and then exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Stabilize on the left leg, lift the right leg up and open the hip here. Just beginning to open up that hip flexor that can get closed off in your run. You can bring the knee in slightly, bring the foot out and down, and then come into a fully open position. Find your maximum, point the toe, lift the knee up to the, knee up to the sky, the heel of the foot comes towards the buttock. And then exhale, rotate in the hip, bring the foot back down, reset the shoulders and the pelvis, lift the heels, bend the knees, look forward, come lightly, however that looks for you, to the front of the mat, exhale, fold, inhale, rise all the way up, and then exhale, samasthiti, one more time, inhale, arms up, look up, exhale, fold, inhale, lengthen the front body, exhale, push up position, try to skip plank, inhale, up dog, really open the chest, Exhale, downward facing dog. Then lift that left leg up as you stabilize on the right foot. Open the hip here. And then these small pulsing actions. You don't come forward in downward dog here. You stay in the downward dog shape. You're just moving at the hip. So the knee comes in slightly. The hip opens up and out. One more time, knee in. Hips open up and out. 
point the toe, heel comes to the outer buttock, knee up towards the sky, hold here. And then exhale, slowly release, resetting the shoulders and the pelvis. Use the inhalation to lightly come to the front of the mat, lengthen the front body. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Look up. And then exhale, Surya Namaskar B. Utkatasana chair pose. Inhale, arms up, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen the front body. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, right leg comes forward, a low lunge here, keep the hips low, inhale, warrior one, exhale, chaturanga, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog, left leg comes forward, right heel swivels and drops to the ground, hips stay low, inhale up, and exhale, right back into chaturanga, so long inhales and exhales, inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale, Downward facing dog. This time, stabilize onto the left foot, lift the right foot up slightly, point the toe, and begin to inhale as you stretch the leg up towards the sky. Keep the heel of the left foot onto the ground. We'll do it 10 times. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Set the foot back down onto the ground, lift the heels, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale, come all the way to the front of the mat, lengthen the front body. Exhale, fold. Drop the buttocks down, inhale, Utkatasana chair pose. Exhale, Samasiti. Two more times. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen the front body. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog, right leg comes forward, hips stay low, inhale, warrior one. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, push through the full hand. Exhale, down dog, left leg comes forward, warrior one, inhale up. And exhale, chaturanga, long exhalation. Inhale, roll over the toes, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Stabilize onto that right foot, lift the left foot slightly, point the toe here. Stretching the leg up towards the sky, sort of throw it up. Three, four, five, keep breathing through the nose. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Place the foot back down onto the ground lightly, set the shoulders and the hips. Then lift the heels, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale all the way to the front of the mat, lengthen the front body. Exhale, fold. Drop the buttocks down, chair pose, inhale, and exhale, Samasiti. Last round, inhale, chair pose, look up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen the front body. Exhale, Chaturanga, move slowly here. Inhale, up dog, really savor each pose. Exhale, down dog, warrior one, right leg forward. A long exhalation as you come into Chaturanga. In inhale up and exhale back. Inhale, warrior one, long inhalation. Exhale, Chaturanga, long exhalation. Inhale, up dog and exhale, downward facing dog. In this downward facing dog, lengthen the hands away from the feet here. Push firmly through the root of the palm. Stretch the shoulders towards the buttocks the buttocks towards the sky, and then lengthen from the buttocks down to the heels of the feet, even if the heels of the feet don't touch, and find stability here, letting go of movement, a static hold. You can use this posture to inspect your knees, your ankles, your hips, noticing your unique alignment, becoming aware of any deficiencies you may have or instability you may have or incorrect rotations of the joints and studying your own unique self. Finish the exhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, look forward, inhale, come all the way to the front of the mat, lengthen the front body, and then exhale, fold. Utkatasana, let the buttocks come down, inhale, lift up, 
and exhale, Samastiti. So now we'll begin with just a few poses here to stretch the body. Take the hands to the hips, lightly hop the feet apart. Inhale, arms up, lengthen here. Exhale, reach down, grab the big toes. Stretch up as you pull hard on the big toes. The arms are straight here, look forward. If you have really tight hamstrings, this is where you're gonna stay for about the next five breaths. If you have looser hamstrings, bend the elbows out to the side. Look to the belly button here. The chin compresses towards the chest. We'll stay here for about a five count. Noticing where you may be working too hard, where you may not be working hard enough. Keeping the mind connected to the rhythm of the breath. Inhale, lengthen the front body. That was Padangustasana. This is Padahastasana. Take the hands underneath the feet now. The backs of the palms are onto the ground. The toes come all the way up to the wrists if possible. Then pull the arms as though you're going to lift the hands off the ground. And at the same time, push the toes into the hands to pin the hands down. Look up, lengthen here. If your hamstrings are short, stay. This is an uncomfortable position, but it will get more flexibility in your back sooner than if you fold. If you have flexibility in the hamstrings, Exhale, look towards the belly button. Continue to apply this pressure of the toes into the palms of the hands so that the hands push down and at the same time resist that by pulling up. Find yourself being pulled further and further into the posture. Exhale. Inhale, lengthen the front body here. Exhale, and release the hands from the hips, take the, or from the feet, take them all the way to the hips, and use the inhale to rise slowly up. Step the feet together, leave the right foot at the front of the mat, and then step the left leg straight back so that both sets of toes face forward, the hips are square to the front of the mat. Take the hands behind you into a reverse prayer position if possible. If not possible, just grab the wrists or the elbows. If you're in reverse prayer, work the hands up all the way high up onto the back body. Then push the pinky finger edge of the hand into the spinal column. Lift the chest here like a mini back bend, look up. Then keep that length in the front body, push the feet apart from one another so that you feel the pelvis opening slightly here and come forward. Once the chest comes down towards the upper thigh, then curl the chin in towards the chest slightly. If you can bring the forehead to the knee, bring the forehead to the knee and push the forehead into the knee while you push the knee into the forehead, find this opposing action. You have to hug the belly high up and in in order to protect the lumbar spine. Finish the exhale. Inhale, push the feet away from each other to stabilize, rise up, and then exhale, rotate to face the back edge of the mat. Square the hips up here. Inhale, look up, and then exhale. Keep that length at the front body. Push the feet apart from one another and exhale, fold. Again, the forehead comes in towards the knee once the chest comes down towards the upper thigh. Finish the exhale. Inhale, look up slightly, release the hands down towards the ground, and then step that back leg in. You can keep both hands onto the ground as you come into a standing splits, or you can take the left hand to the left ankle and use that hand to pull your face closer to the big toe of the left foot. Stretch the right leg high up towards the sky. If you have a lot of balance here, you can release both hands and grab the ankle with both hands. I just went on this run, so I'm going to keep it relatively simple for myself and simply hold the ankle with the left foot. A few breaths here, you can curl the head in slightly, looking as though you were looking between the two legs. One more inhale, and exhale. Release that foot down so that it comes to greet the opposite foot, and then stabilize on that right leg. You should be facing the back edge of the mat now, and lift the left leg up. Honor the difference between the two sides of the body. Again, you can hold that right ankle 
with the right hand as you stretch the left foot to the sky. You can use both hands on the right ankle or you can keep both hands on the ground. Whatever's right for your practice. And then exhale. Release that foot back down onto the ground directly next to the other foot. Then turn, stay down here. Step the legs apart so that you come into this wide leg forward, standing forward fold position. Bring the hands onto the ground underneath the shoulders for a second. And then keep the feet turning slightly in towards each other. You don't want the legs too wide apart nor too close together. Stretch the upper body here so you come in this downward facing dog position with the upper body looking down towards the ground. Let the head hang. Put a healthy amount of pressure in the right and the left palm of the hand, pushing down and out here as you let the buttocks and the hips lean slightly back, really working to lengthen the spine. Now, depending on your flexibility here, if you don't have a lot of flexibility in the hamstrings and the back body, then you want to stay in this position for a little longer. If you do have flexibility, bring the hands back for Prasarita Padottanasana. You come into this tripod position, and then if you have a lot of um, healthy practice, healthy spine, then you can come all the way up into tripod headstand. We'll hold here for five breaths. Stay with whatever variation of the posture works best for you and your body and your practice. If you're able to bring the legs off the ground, we get some reverse circulation here, which is especially important after a run. Exhale, if your legs are up, slowly bring them down. And then right before the feet hit the ground, just hover for a breath. So the toes are like at just an inch off the ground. Just hover here for a breath. And then place the feet gently back where you began. Wherever you are in the pose, lift the body up slightly. Exhale here. And then rise all the way up. Palms touch. Look up. And then exhale. The hands come down to the sides. Then inhale. Take the hands behind the back body. Interlace the fingers here. Pull the arms back with the hands. Inhale, look up, and then exhale, dive forward. If you can bring the crown of the head or the back of the skull to the ground, do that. Otherwise, just come to your level of flexibility. And then the arms come behind you, and eventually the hands reach to the ground. Finish the exhale. Use a long inhalation to rise all the way up. The hands release, look up. And then turn the toes out away from each other. So you turn the toes out, they face the outer edges of the mat, and then bend the knees here slightly, coming into this wide leg stance position. Take the hands onto the knees, and then just allow yourself to sink into this pose for a few breaths. You can let the shoulders come up towards the ears here, but keep the chest open so the shoulder blades are back. And then you can do a few rocks from side to side, encouraging the inner thigh to open. And a little bouncing up and down, as long as you're engaging the muscles of the body. So how do you know? Lift the 10 toes off the ground, really feel like the heel is connected. The ball of the toes are connected to the floor more strongly than you're gripping with the toes. And then stay here, bring the hands down onto the ground in between the feet slightly, just a little bit in front of you. The elbows and wrists are underneath the shoulders. Straighten the legs as you inhale, exhale, bend the knees. So straighten, bend, straighten, bend. Three more times. Two and three. Keep the knees bent here. Take the hands back onto the knees. And then inhale, on the exhale, turn towards the left, let the right shoulder drop in, look over the left shoulder, and then come back towards the middle, go in the opposite direction.
two more times on either side. And then exhale, come back to center. Inhale, rise all the way up, turn to face the front edge of the mat, place the hands down onto the ground, step yourself back into a plank position, and then slowly lower down, knees, chest, chin, and lift yourself up for a moment to stretch and lengthen the front body. Bring the backs of the palms down onto the ground, next to the hips, lift the legs, lift the chest here, hold. Really feel as though the backs of the palms push into the ground so that the shoulders lift up away from the earth. Then interlace the palms here, pull the knuckles back away from you and up slightly, keep the feet lifted. And then exhale, the hands come onto the ground. Keep the thighs onto the ground. Inhale, straighten the arms and look up. And then exhale. Bend the knees here. Push yourself back. Come into a child's pose position. Stretch the arms in front of you. So keep the head up here. Keep the elbows off the ground. Be up onto the tips of the fingers. Lengthen the arms away from you as you pull the earth towards you. Look down towards the ground. Try to traction the spine a little bit here. Keep pressure even in all fingertips. And the feeling, the energetic feeling, is though the energy moves from the tip of the thumb all the way out to the pinky finger, and that has a positive effect on the shoulders. Finish the exhale. Rise up on the inhalation. Take the knees back slightly, be onto the toes. Then stack the hips directly over the knees. Push back, bring the chin to the ground. Let the chest come to the ground, looking forward. If this is too difficult for you, you can be up as much as you need to be, but look forward as much as you can. As you get more and more flexible in the posture, after holding it for some time, you may be able to get more openness. The chin can come more forward. And then inhale, rise yourself slowly up. Bring the knees towards the center of the mat. Let the knees come all the way together to touch and then sit back between the heels. You maybe need to be a little more forward if you're like me and in the middle of an abandoned building and you want to stay on your mat. Look down at the feet behind you and separate the toes apart from each other. Make sure the top of the feet are firmly pressing into the ground. The center of the knees as much as possible are facing up towards the sky. You can stay in this position, the hands onto the feet, the chest lifted. You can always put some support underneath the buttocks, roll up a towel or a block or something. If this is challenging for you, then stay here. If this is not so challenging for you, begin to lean yourself back slightly. You can come first to your elbows, just see what that's like. Try to keep the knees together as much as possible, and if possible, then come all the way onto the back. You might need to move your ponytail. Then take the elbows, interlace the elbows if you're all the way in the supine position of Virasana, and bring them overhead and lengthen them onto the ground behind you. I'm going to keep them directly over my face because the clouds are coming in and out right now. The sun is coming in and out. And I want to protect my face from the sun. Bring the attention of your mind back to the breath. Breathing in and out through the nose. And it's a regulated breath. If you're a yogi, if you practice yoga regularly, then you're looking for a ujjayi breath, listening for the sound, but also the sensation of the feeling of the breath rising up and expanding the body with each exhale.
And exhale. If you took the full supine position, bring the hands to the ground. Slowly lift yourself up. Try to lift yourself evenly. So the right and the left side, you tend to favor one side. Then come all the way back up. Regardless of if you've been in the position a while or not, inhale, take the arms out in front of you and then interlace the fingers. Connect the tips of the thumbs. Notice which pinky finger is on the top and which one is on the bottom because we're going to change positions in a moment. And then inhale, bring the arms up. Imagine here that you push the buttocks down into the ground and stretch the palms of the hands up towards the sky or the ceiling, depending on where you are in the world, in a room or outside. And then exhale, bring the arms down to eye level. Now's where you're going to get uncomfortable. Switch the interlace so the opposite pinky finger is on the bottom. Then re-extend the arms and inhale, bring them back up. Exhale, slowly release the arms. If you have a, actually just come out of this position, so for many people that's plenty long enough, take the knees back slightly behind the hips and then push yourself into a downward facing dog position. Be really gentle on the knees because we were there for quite a bit of time. Look towards the belly button. Just hold here for a moment as you open up the backs of the knees and the backs of the legs. Exhale, and then inhale, bring the right foot forward, drop the left knee onto the ground and take the left knee back as far as possible. And then sink into the two hips here as you bring the elbows to the ground. So notice here that the feeling should be as though that front foot is screwing into the earth. The energy goes from the center of the heel out towards the big toe, the base of the big toe, out towards the pinky toe and back around to the center of the heel. That's the energetic movement. And stay here for a moment. Turn the left elbow so it faces out. The toes face the right toe. And then bring the right arm up to the sky. Look up. Notice the tendency to sink here, and instead of sinking, lift up out of the shoulders. And then exhale, bring the hand back down onto the ground. So you can stay with this position, you can rise up slightly, or if you have the splits or you're working on the splits, you can come into a full splits position. So especially if you're a practicing yogi and you want to maintain your splits, you want to definitely do the splits after you go for a run so that you can keep that flexibility, which will go away pretty fast after running. Inhale, if you took the splits, exhale, come forward. Otherwise, just stay with that last position a few more breaths. Finish the exhale. Inhale, rise up, and then go slowly here as you rotate the femur bones, the big bones of the upper legs in the hip sockets, and then come to the back, face the back of the mat. So now the left front is onto the ground, the left knee is bent, the right knee is back far, and you come to the elbows here. And then let the hips sink. Let yourself sink into the hips. Again, feeling this sensation that the front foot, the left foot is screwing into the ground. From the center of the heel, the energy moves to the base of the big toe, out to the base of the pinky toe, and back around to the center of the heel. Engage the buttock slightly, especially that right back buttock, squeezing it in. And turn the right elbow out, the right fingertips face the left foot, and lift that left arm up to the ceiling or up to the sky. Again, try not to sink into the shoulders, lift up out of the shoulders, 
instead of sinking down towards the ground, let, let the sinking and the openness happen in the hips. And then exhale, the hand comes down to the ground. So you can stay in this position, this first position that we were just in, or if you're working on the splits or you have the splits, you can come into your variation of the splits. The arms come up as you look up, and then exhale, come over that front leg. Using the stillness of the posture, not to be totally still, but to be investigating the body and looking for where you're working too much, where you're not working enough, where your imbalances are, where you're wide awake to your body, but where your tendencies are to be asleep to your body, trying to wake, it, wake up in those areas. If you took Hanumanasana, the splits, and you folded, inhale, rise up, and then rotate here, and turn the legs so that you're facing the wide edge of the mat looking forward. So the feet don't have to be so wide apart here. You can bring them in slightly towards one another. Then lift up, the arms reach up, exhale, reach out, grab the outer edges of the feet and pull them in towards you to lengthen the front body. And then bring the chest and then the chin down to the ground. Exhale. Inhale, rise all the way up. Take the right arm inside the right thigh. Can reach in front of you to grab the outer edge of the feet. Can reach over you to grab the outer edge of the foot. Or you can simply stretch the arm across the body here if you don't have the reach yet to grab the foot. And then practice pushing that right arm, the back of the upper arm, into the inner thigh and open up the side body on the, on the left side. Inhale, rise up, and then exhale, going in the opposite direction, reaching for that outer edge of the foot, however you can access it. If you can't access it, just simply letting the arm come up and over. The important part here is that you're working that left upper arm into the left inner thigh. Once you get the hand onto the foot, then it's really about pulling the foot towards you so that you can stretch that left side or that right side body even more. And then inhale and rise up. Bend the knees here, being gentle with yourself. Take the bottoms of the feet together. Bringing the bottoms of the feet together. Push the bottoms of the feet together strongly. Sit up straight here. If you really have limited flexibility, sit on some support, a block or a blanket or a pillow. Otherwise, interlace the fingers. Take them underneath the feet right at the toes and pull up to lift the chest. Holding in this position just a few more breaths, still considering if you're breathing in and out through the nose or not, making that your primary aim. This will also increase your VO2 max to be able to, um, if you're a runner and that matters to you, it may not, but to be able to breathe through your nose as much as possible. And then exhale, release that. Take the right arm down to the ground Inhale, bring the left arm up and over. Look down to the ground. Push the elbow and the hand away from you. So you should sh feel the right um, side body activate and then lengthen here the left side body. Inhale, rise up and go in the opposite direction. Inhale and rise up. Take the hands to the knees, not the exact knee joint, but just above slightly. Let the shoulders come up to the ears. Push the knees down strongly with the hands. The feet will open up here. Begin to lean forward. If you're working on your flexibility, you can do small rocks. Just be gentle, honor your own flexibility. If you're 
really stiff in this pose, then just simply holding the pose while seated onto a block is plenty of work for you for now. The next time, if you come slightly forward, stretch the arms out away from you and then come into this downward facing dog position with the upper body, look down towards the ground. Eventually, maybe the forehead comes down to the ground and the elbows release down as well. Finish the exhale and inhale, rise slowly up. Gently bring the knees back together, come to face the front of the mat, come back into downward facing dog, just a few breaths here to open up the back of the legs. And that right knee comes forward for King Pigeon on the right side, one leg King Pigeon on the right side, so you can stretch the left leg back, inhale, lengthen the front body, and then exhale, stretch out over. If this is very challenging for you, you stick a block underneath that right hip or some sort of pillow or something. You can also keep the fists stacked on top of each other and let the forehead rest onto the fists. And then inhale, press yourself up. If you want to work on the back bend here, bend that knee and we'll just do a gentle variation or a more gentle variation. The foot comes towards the outer buttock, look back. And then exhale, slowly release. Swing that left leg out into the side, bring it forward, swing that right leg back. And then set yourself up here. Inhale, lengthen the front body, and exhale, extend out over that front leg. Noticing what happens to the mind when there's no talking. Trying to keep the mind present and fixed on the movements of the body, the movements of the breath. This is what differentiates a yoga practice from another kind of fitness practice or just merely stretching. So you're working on this integrated experience. And that, that actually is what yoga is. It's the integrated experience. It's not the posture that you do. Lift up here, then bend that back knee. And to whatever your level of capacity is here, bring the knee or the heel towards the outer buttock. Look back behind you. So often in the poses, we can feel this energetic falling down. You want to rise up. You want to feel this energetic lift up. This is where the ujjayi breath comes in. It's upward conqueror, upward warrior. And exhale, release that leg, swing the right leg out to the side. Bring the right leg forward here and come to lie onto the back. So you can stay here coming into bridge pose. The feet come down onto the ground. The fingers interlace underneath you. You can stay here for a few breaths. Do this three or four times coming out when you feel you're at your maximum capacity and going right back in. If you want to go deeper and you want to go into full wheel, then the hands come down next to the ears. The fingertips face towards the feet. Exhale and inhale, rise up. Because you maybe have just done a run, you can do this pulsing action where you push the feet into the ground and open up the chest as much as possible. So push the feet in, come forward towards the hands a few more times. If you're in a bridge pose, come out, go back in, whatever your practice is here. And then come into your full variation of wheel. and exhale, come slowly out. Lengthen the body, scoot slightly forward onto the mat for shoulder stand. 
So you can stay with supported bridge pose if that's where you're at, or if you have a shoulder stand, you simply roll yourself over to this plow pose position, come onto the tops of the shoulders as much as possible. Bring the hands onto the back body, holding the back body firmly with the hands, lift the legs up to the sky. So you're onto the tops of the shoulders, keep a little space at the front of the throat. So you push into the rounded part of the back of the skull. There's some space between the chin and the chest. The tops of the shoulders, the outer edge of the top shoulder, pushes down into the ground evenly on the right and left side. And then exhale, slowly release. Come into plow pose here. The toes come to the ground if possible for you. The back stays, stays as straight as is comfortable or, or what your capacity is. The, elbow, or the hands reach away from you towards the front edge of the mat. Stay here just a few breaths. And then slowly release. Exhale, coming out of the posture. Take the heels of the feet to the ground. Sit onto the palms of the hands. The bottom of the hand faces the ground. The palm top of the hand is underneath the buttock. Then bend the elbows here as you lift the chest up, coming to the crown of the head. Point the toes. and then exhale and slowly release. Roll yourself up, bring yourself through a vinyasa. Take yourself back into a push-up position. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. And then come to sit or lie all the way onto the ground. So if you have a tennis ball, this is what I'll use my tennis ball for now. Just before we come into Shavasana, you can do some gentle rolling around of the tennis ball. I'm actually gonna lift myself up slightly so I get some heavier weight of the foot onto the ball. And just open up the bottom of the foot here, especially between the toes, the metatarsals. Running can be pretty hard on the feet. And so you can stay here a little longer, just do one foot and then the other. Find those points that feel particularly uncomfortable and stay there for a little while. If you don't have a tennis ball, you can just use your hands. Gently massage your feet for a little bit, bringing some circulation into the feet, getting limp to flow, and then release. Put the tennis ball away. Come to lie all the way onto your back. I'm going to put a towel over my head here to protect from the sun. If you're outside, I suggest you do the same. Hopefully you're wearing sunscreen. And tuck the shoulders underneath you slightly. Open the arms out to the side, the legs out to the side. Let your eyes close and let go. And this is maybe the most important posture after a run. Releasing all the compression on the body. Bit by bit, allow the joints to loosen. Allow the muscles to soften so that you feel this experience of the inner body releasing. If you're working with the ujjayi breath, let go of it now. Just let the breath be in its natural rhythm. You feel as though your eyes get heavy and sink into their sockets, allowing the vision to relax. Imagine that your tongue sinks deep into the back of the throat feeling a spacious quality inside of your mouth. And then take as much time as you need here, fully experiencing your Shavasana 
and come out whenever you're ready. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this practice was helpful for you and that your body stays healthy and that you continue to take care of yourself for the good of all humanity.